busts out of those mold. Uh, a modern comic has to have pulse and flow. And by that, I mean that uh, uh, the pages uh, open up for a big scene and they close down for dialogue. You have to be careful with your dialogue. You don't want to bore the reader. But obviously, uh, a full page splash of two protagonists slugging it out uh, requires a lot less dialogue than a nine page, uh, than a nine panel page with two characters talking. Uh, the risk is when you have two characters talking, you can't bore the reader. And that means the dialogue has to uh, both reveal character and advance the plot. And it has to be sparing. Uh, one of my rules is uh, be original. And, and that includes in the dialogue. It's essential that you find new ways to say things that have been said a thousand times before. You must never, ever write, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Move it, people. Or we have to talk or any of a thousand other cliches that you've read a thousand times in a thousand comics. Find a new way to say it. Look back into your own history, your own dialogue with your friends, uh, and come up with something original. Uh, and when I say be original, uh, it's not that hard because we're all unique human beings. And if you look within yourself and your own interactions with people over the years, you'll find unique language that worked for you or worked for your friend. Remember it, write it down, and use it when it's appropriate. Every page must have an establishing shot. An establishing shot is a single panel that shows everybody involved on that page, every character, uh, in the same physical environment and the relationship to each other. Once you do that, you can jump from talking head to talking head. But you have to have an establishing shot on each page. Well, what if you change scenes in the middle of the page? I advise against that. That's what pages are for. They're like episodes on your favorite TV show. You have eight minutes of episode, and then you break for a commercial. And after the commercial break, you may go to a different scene. But it's difficult to pull off a scene change in the middle of the page. Uh, I don't do it. And here's where thumbnails come in. You all know what thumbnails are. They're, they're little representations of the finished page. Uh, it's not finished art, uh, but it's enough to show you what's going on in each panel. And most accomplished artists use thumbnails. Uh, Steve Rude does, Bill Reinhold does. Every accomplished artist I know, when they're working off a script, will thumbnail the page first so they get a rough idea how they're going to lay it out. And the thumbnail is important because not only does it deal with advancing the story, it deals with design. Uh, and a great artist will work four or five or six panels or however many on a page you have into a single coherent design. When you look back and you see it, and you just go, wow. But it also advances the story. You don't want to let the, advance, uh, the design interfere with, with clear storytelling. Uh, so it's not essential, but it's there for the artist to use. Uh, we speak of the pulse and flow of visual, visual dynamics. That means you open, and maybe the first panel is a, a full page spread, uh, and then you get into the nuts and bolts of the story, and the second page uh, consists of five or six panels of characters uh, advancing the story, either through dialogue or through action. Uh, the modern comic reader is accustomed to this pulse and flow. Uh, it adds rhythm to the story, and by that I mean uh, uh, it's good dynamics, and sometimes the story is, is quiet. It's two people talking to each other, and sometimes the story blows up when, when people come to blows or there's a big action sequence. As far as uh, single page images, full page splashes, uh, don't ever waste your time on a huge head for a single page and have them talk and talk and talk. The full page is, is for spectacular scenes, and I think they work the best when, it, when it's a magnificent establishing shot where you see for the first time an ancient civilization or a temple in a clearing, uh, and you absorb the architectural details. That's when a full page splash is worthwhile. Uh, as for explosions, <laughs> if you've seen one explosion, you've seen them all. I've seen an awful lot of comic book pages, full page splashes devoted to explosions. Eh, so what? It's a big ball of expanding gas. Uh, if I would, when I do an explosion, I would never uh, devote more than a third of the page to it at most. 
these days, uh, I find myself usually using five panels per page as a comfortable fit for me, and I manage to tell the story in five panels per page. But when required, I will go as high as seven, nine, or ten panels. It, it all depends on what the story requires. Uh, I have three rules. The first rule is it's the storyteller's job to entertain. Keep that foremost in your mind. Oh, what is entertainment? It's everything. It's the art, it's the story, it's the dialogue, it's the characterization. Whereas my old uh, writing instructor, Jerry McNeely, said, you make them laugh a little bit, you make them cry a little bit, you scare the hell out of them, and that's entertainment. Um, the second rule is uh, show, don't tell. Now, this sounds so simple, but comics are a visual medium. Uh, and you can do the same thing in a, in a novel as well. It's much better to show than to tell. Uh, you could say John is a mean man, or you can show John kicking a puppy, and you know which one is more effective. Uh, and the third rule, of course, is be original, and we already covered that. When I say be original, be original in your story ideas, and be original in your dialogue and how you tell a story. They say there are only seven basic plots in fiction. I don't know about that. It may be true. How many vengeance stories have we read? And yet we still love vengeance stories. Uh, so it's your responsibility as a storyteller to make it fresh, uh, to put a new spin on it. Uh, the other day, I attended a comic convention with my old friend Rags Morales, a terrific artist with whom I worked on Turok for Valiant, and Rags teaches at uh, the Joe Kubert School, or he did, and, and Rags had some rules that he told me, and his first rule is the artist is the director, it's up to the artist to decide who goes where. Uh, the second rule is, if you have a question, ask the writer. The third rule is, all pairings are opposite, and I said, what do you mean by that, uh, uh, Rags? And he says, well, uh, when you have two protagonists, they spark and play off each other much more effectively if they're not the same. And of course, there are a thousand examples, but I'll just name a couple. Hawk and Dove. I mean, that's so obvious, it's in the name. Uh, Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. Sherlock Holmes is, is uh, manic, uh, given to grand gestures, not social. Uh, and John Watson is the exact opposite. And if you go through fiction and you find these characters uh, 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 all these uh, pairings uh, in your favorite movies, 48 Hours, Another 48 Hours, any buddy cop movie, uh, you understand what rags means, that they are opposites, they're different and they play off each other. Uh, rags' fourth rule is art is the creation of something from nothing that is true about the human condition. And this speaks to everything that's gone before here, that uh, when you tell a story, uh, it has to reflect what we know to be true, and often what we know to be true is, is not necessarily uh, that which is written in history books, but that which we know about humanity and the way humanity behaves. Uh, Rags also says, if the story starts negative, it must neg end negative. And if it starts happy, it must end happy. I don't necessarily agree with this. Uh, I think that you have many great, uplifting stories that begin with the hero in misery, and he triumphs by the end. Uh, but these are Rags' rules, and they work for Rags, and he knows what he's talking about. Uh, and finally, uh, Rags' advice for artists is, every time you add information to a panel, like another person, for example, or the presence of a dog, or an important painting, you pull your camera back a step to encompass that. And this has to do with the establishing shot as well. It goes hand in hand with the establishing shot. So these are just a few, a few rules. Uh, they are shaggy and loose about how to create a comic, and I hope they will be of assistance to you. All right, thanks, Mike. Uh, so our goal is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to be uploading a new YouTube video. So go to Ann and Mike Barron YouTube to subscribe and see what new updates are happening. Thanks so much for listening. All right, bye-bye.